On today's installment of New Mexico Stories, I'm going to tell you the story of Arthur Manby, who was a con man, a swindler, and an all-around dickweed that lived in Taos, New Mexico from 1883 to 1929. As a note, any money that I make off of these New Mexico Story videos is going to go towards children's charities in New Mexico, with the first initial push being towards getting good winter clothes for kids who can't afford it. That actually ends November 15th. Uh, and then after that, we're going to go after food insecurity. I'm also going to put a link to a fundraiser in the comments. If you feel so inclined, a donation would be greatly appreciated. However, just watching this and interacting with it also helps the cause. So without further ado, the story of Arthur Butthole Manby. Arthur Manby moved from England to Taos, New Mexico in 1883 to join a syndicate that owned the Mystic Mine, uh, which was a gold and copper mine in Colfax County, New Mexico. It was five miles away from the Aztec Mine, which is actually one of the most productive gold mines in the entire world. So. Manby made some money off of that, uh, and then right afterwards he spun up a couple of companies whose aim was to buy up as much land as they could in the surrounding area. And his business practices there and beyond were some of the reasons that he became the most hated man in Taos and possibly all of New Mexico. So if Manby wanted some land, he was going to get that land. Now he employed a bunch of unsavory tactics, among which were things you'd expect like just harassing people until they sold to him. But he also had some more creative avenues like colluding with local judges to get the land devalued. And my personal favorite, he paid a local tarot card reader to convince people that their land was cursed so that they would sell it to him. Now his ultimate goal was to get his hands on the Antonio Martinez land grant, which was 61.6 thousand acres near Taos. Now he ended up getting his hands on 59,000 acres of that, including a site that had hot springs on the Rio Grande. And in order to do that, Mamby did a bunch of sketchy shit. He tricked the local Native Americans and Spanish families to sell him land for pennies on the dollar, and he'd also sell land deeds and water rights to places that he didn't own. Additionally, he aggressively sought out investors in England, New York, Chicago, and Maryland and lied to them. He'd tell them things like, I'm going to build this grand hotel and garden on this hot spring site, and you guys are going to see a crazy return on your investment. But that shit didn't happen. He used their money to improve his estate and did fuck all with the land. So in 1913, Manby finally got his hands on all that land. But between 1902 and 1913, no less than 30 civil lawsuits were filed against him for the fraud and the fuckery that he was committing. And by 1916, all but 23 acres of the land that he owned was sold at public auction to cover his debts. So July of 1929, Manby is still living in Taos and he has made exactly zero more friends in the general area. A sheriff stops by the estate to serve him some paperwork from a civil case that he had previously lost, but nobody answers the door. And the locals in the area are spreading rumors that maybe Manby's dead. So the sheriff and a couple of deputies come back a couple days later to bust in the house. And in the house, they find Manby's corpse. So the sheriff and his deputies notice something odd about the corpse almost immediately, and that is, it doesn't have a head. Uh, but in one of the adjacent rooms, they find a disfigured head on the ground. They're like, bam, mystery solved. They use some of the personal effects on the corpse uh, and some of Mamby's dental records to be like, yeah, this is Mamby. And my favorite part about this whole case is that the coroner in the case says, natural causes. <laughs> he says, this dude had dogs, so he died around the dogs. They chewed his head off. They brought it in the other room. They chewed up his face a little bit, uh, and that was it. And everybody in Taos hates Mamby so much, they're like, yeah, of course, that's exactly what happened. Everybody knows that when you die around dogs, they'll bite your head off, chew your face a little bit, not eat any other part of your body, uh, and then just call it a day. So they're like, fucking, psh, psh, psh. Mamby's done, and they bury him. Now, Mamby's brother gets wind of this. Uh, he's like, I don't think that's what happened. He pays to get the body exhumed. They do another autopsy. They find shotgun pellets in the body. Uh, but the only thing that I can find after this is that the local investigators say that there's rumors that Mamby faked his own death. They can't prove otherwise, so they're just like, eh and they bury him again. A final interesting note here is that people hated Manby so much that they wouldn't allow him to be buried in the local Protestant or Catholic cemetery. So they just buried him outside of it. So yeah, that's the story of Arthur Manby. I hope you enjoyed it.